Hi everyone, Prepper Del here. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to make some um, mini buddy burners, aka survival candles. These come in lots of different sizes. Um, traditionally, they're done in like coke can sizes. Cut them up, take different sizes. I'm going to do them in in different size, different size ones. Um, and I like the idea of using a, a resealable tin, a reusable tin for this one. So we can screw it back down, we can keep refilling it after we've used it. So, why am I making mini ones? The reason behind the mini one is I want to use it like a bit like a, a solid fuel tab. Um, even, even though it's a candle as well, so that, you know, maybe just one of these is enough to heat up um, your water in your hobo stove or in your, in your folding stove. Um, so just just experimenting really so these are just mini ones plus the mini ones are more of a size for in your survival tins in your kits taking up a bit less space you can get many of these made the different tea light size ones so that's all it's made out of is a, is the tea light um i saw a video mad dog did a video a while ago on his upgrade on his buddy burner so that really just inspired me to um try and make my own so I've been making a few different ones trying a few different things single wicks double wicks different ignition sources so I've put jute twine in this one the reason why I've gone for jute and things like that is as you all know I like to start things with a ferro rod um, but I just wanted to be able to make sure that you can get ignition when you need to get ignition so normal wicks in these so you light it with a lighter with matches stuff like that and then um, the reason for the jute twine and things is just so that I can ignite it with a different ignition source really so that's what I just wanted to try with that with these been mini they're a wee bit more complicated on getting the ignition source but the reason behind those is so that it's more compact I've also been mixing a bit of fat wood in with it so um, it helps us go along so what I want to do is while while I'm showing you how I'm going to make these, I'm just going to put on some water, do a little test. We're going to put that in the wee homemade hobo stove that I made. It's just made out of a coffee can, as you can see. Nice cheap coffee can. Drilled some holes in it. Um, cut out the gap for it so we can feed um, wood into that. And it's actually ideal for um, our candles, mini buddy burners and even the next size up which I'm going to work on doing that. So that's the, the DIY hobo stove. We can all buy all the expensive ones and that but it's a coffee can, drill it, costs you nothing, you've already paid for it. So we're going to put that on in the background and we're going to see um, actually how long that takes to, to get going. So we'll like these. I made these yesterday the the burnt the, these ones the first lot that you see here I made these up yesterday so they've been setting overnight now the reason why I've put a couple of different a couple of wicks in it is to try and get a hotter ignition source from it rather than a single wick so we'll just put that on in the background as you can see and we'll see how we get on with it so let's have a wee start I've got an old canteen cup just with wax in it, with a wee bit of wax left, and we're going to use the tea lights. These are just cheap ones from the pound shop. They just come out. Uh, the I'll leave the wicks in because what will happen is they'll just float out once the wax has melted. So we'll use a couple of those for now. I think what we'll do is we'll make up. Um, I'll show you a small one, and we'll make a. a um, I'll leave that there for now. Well, we'll make a small one and we'll make the mid-size reusable one. These could be reusable if you wanted them to be. So, firstly, what do we need? We've got the candles. Let's get that on melting. So we just put that on a low, a low heat on that there. So that's on. Just had to get the right one on there. So we've got different fat wood, we've got jute twine um, for the different wicks and we've got card. Now you cut the card to the thickness of the container it's going in. So that's a small tea light, that's the card for that 
And all you do is roll it up. Just keep rolling it up. Doesn't matter if you're a wee bit over the top or nothing like that. So it's rolled up like that. And then just place that in the container. Like so. And I've got a larger one done for the larger tin. So we'll just get this rolled up as well. So nice and easy. So there's lots of different reviews on these. I just wanted to show you this quick one that I'm doing. There's lots of different things you can put in for it. Um, lots of different wicks, stuff like that. And then that's those two there. Get them in focus a wee bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some fat wood into these. Now it'll float when the wax comes in. So I've just got it really um, finely cut up. So we'll just get that in. And again, I'm hoping that the fat wood mixing it just helps. Give it gives it a hotter output. So we'll try that, mix some fat wood in it. Now I've also got finer fat wood here. This is done on like a cheese grater. So we'll sprinkle that in. Again it'll float. So we'll look forward to that. It's and it's good for this the smaller um, the smaller candle ones. So what we can do here, you can see how quickly that's melting. The wee wicks just float about in it. You can reuse those wicks. I cut off some jute twine, natural jute twine. Or you can shove a birthday candle in there, use the wick from that. Doesn't matter about the colours or anything like that. I also thought that we could maybe use, uh, you've seen these NATO wicks, these fire wicks. So they come a little bit like the cigarette ends, you twist them up and it's the fibre inside. So I've even thought we could maybe use one of those and, and, and it's an ignition source for a lighter or for, um, for a ferro rod. So I think we'll try that one with that. We'll just squeeze that one into there. It sits a little bit proud but don't worry about that. You can cut things down if you need be. I think that'll make a great ignition with the ferro rod that one. So that's that one's ready to go when we get the wax on it. Wax is melting nicely in there. Just give it a little shake about. And then we've got this one set. So we just need to decide what we're going to do with this one for um, a wix. I think what I'll do with that one is we'll do some um, jute, jute twine. And the good thing about the jute is it actually absorbs the wax as you put it in. Just cut off some bits. Now with the different amounts of wicks you've got in it, gives you a different burn rate. You can put one in it, you can put two in it, you can put four in it, you can put six in it. It's entirely up to you. This is all just trial and error. And this is my way of doing it. See in the background, see that smoke coming through that stuff? We'll check that water in a minute. So, I'm going to put those wicks in. The only thing we've got to watch when we um, when we do that is that the twine doesn't just float away. So let's take a quick look. Oh. Starting to bubble away there. Put that back on there. Burning nicely now if you can see that in the background. That we hope our stuff. Like that. So the wax has melted nicely there. So let's just switch it off for a wee minute. See the smoke in the stove now? So that's um, burning away nicely. That's the cardboard ignited in it now. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Well, that's actually nice and tep tepid. So it's a good little test while we're doing it. Quite excited about that, believe it or not. So we've done that. Let's get um, some more fat wood put in there. Candle wax cools really quick. So we just have to be careful when we do it. Just watch where you do it guys and be careful with it. 
So we're going to pour this in there. The cardboard and the jute twine will absorb this really quick. Don't worry about it fizzling. Just be careful. So that's those ones for now. So as you can see, what's happened there is we put about four candles in there and that's it done. And it's absorbing into the cardboard. So we'll put another couple on. And the wax, oh, oh it's in the bottom of that pan is just the wicks. Let's put another couple of those in. And get those melted down. So, watch the tins because they will be hot. The tin is hot. So that's the wax in there and it's absorbed into the cardboard and the jute twine is drawing it up as well. So, nice little start there. Into that one. Hobo stove's going well with that first one we put in in the corner there. Like how that's going. It's, that water's actually aerating now, which is good to see. Now, the wax has started to leach out of that coffee container. I'm not too much bothered about that. Um, that will go dry, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, obviously if you're using it outdoors and that, then you'd have to be using it in a safe place. So melting away. Doesn't take long. Stove's going nice in the corner there. Candle's burning well. Getting a wee bit of heat from it. Just good to just to do a, a little test while we're actually melting it and making. I'm going to show you that water in a wee bit. It's actually looking really good. Give that wee bit a shake. Roll the uh, wax about. Get it melting a wee bit more. Now obviously I'm doing this on a solid surface so that um, it's not too hot. Things aren't too hot. I've got that burning on the burn tray. Just be careful when you're doing it. Don't use the wife's best stuff. Hence why I'm using the canteen cup for that. And that's us. So this is live time. So you try and get absorbed in there. You put that where you want and put as many in as you want in there. Put as much wax wood in there as you want. I might add some more. That's going to be a good one, that. And how are we getting on here? Oh, that's looking great. See all the wicks in there? We can reuse those. And we, we will be reusing those. So, let's top this up a bit more. And then we'll top this little one up too. I'm going to put it inside that lid while I do it. So I'm thinking that that wick might absorb quite a bit. So there's that. There's that. So see how quickly it absorbs. So that's those two made. That will dry. Roughly, I'll leave it overnight as a rule of thumb. Put that on there, that's hot. And we'll see how it goes. Now, in the time it's taken us to do that, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off that. That is well hot enough for a brew. I'm not going to put my finger in it. Because that's just going to be too hot. I can see that air rating. That's ideal. You can see the steam coming off that. That is actually ideal for making a brew, um, cooking your, your, your rations and that in. I'm pleased with how that's turned out and it's not used too much of the burner. So that little idea I've got does actually work. Works nicely. I'm pleased with that. So, there you go. Let's have a go. I'll put that out in a minute. Nicely boiled in the time that's taken us to do that, the time we've had that one. So that was a good test. And that's, let's have a wee look at our candles there. So that's them. 
the setting now and we'll leave those overnight and then they will turn out like these on a larger scale so that was just my quick demo on um, making mini um, mini buddy uh, mini uh, buddy burners survival candles for um, your kits and things like that rather than making a large one and then we've made it in that one so that we can reuse it and put it out and things like that rather than letting it just burn away like that one there but it goes to show the wee tea light ones will do the job so I hope that uh, gives you inspiration to go and make your own guys thanks for watching stay safe keep prepping prep Adele out